Welcome to Termite Machine Works. My name is Keith. And today we have a new project in here and this isn't really a machine project or a welding project. This is a uh, refurbishing or uh, dismantle and reassembling project. And this is a jack shaft off of a large pulverizing machine for the company Robert R. And uh, there's a giant diesel that drives on this end. I'm not uh, uh, sure what uh, size that is. I may uh, have that information by the time I put this on video for you and I'll, I'll list it. Um, there's a, a V-belt section here on the shaft that transmits a belt drive down to another uh, set of pulleys and that set of pulleys runs another shaft over to a drum and a giant hammer and uh, they put in the giant tree stumps and it pulverizes it down into small pieces of material that shipped up north they process that out to be the press board and the, and the uh, imitation uh, beams and all that kind of stuff and new uh, wave uh, construction there alright here's a glimpse of uh, bringing it in through the door there yesterday and then we're going to start dismantling a couple pieces here start measuring and start match marking before we even pull this thing apart alright let's get to it Let's go ahead and we're going to pop these top cap bolts off of here. Well, they're pretty tight. We might actually have to break these with a breaker bar. record what those torques are there and I'm sure they have a torque spec on the book as well. Alright, <clears throat> I'm going to grab my tool here. Alright, I'm going to make sure we're high enough here and alright we'll be able to clear that bearing right there. Let me make sure I got the weight off of here so that I'm not pulling this thing around the floor. Alright and we'll go ahead and increase the, the torque here. We just want to start out down at the bottom down there and we're just coming up at oh there's uh, like 140 no that was 130 okay we're about 140 not yet Just 160. Not yet. 170. Not yet. 
140. Check the other one here just to make sure. Okay. Wrench only goes up about 250 here. 250. Okay, so we're going to have uh, 250 plus torque on there. Let's see. Now that was added on there. Let's just see what this... <sighs> okay, we're going to get the torque rating and uh, get back to this. All right, I went over to a friend of mine, uh, Chuck Holloway, and uh, he has several torque wrenches. Now this wrench here goes up to 300 pounds and I've tried, I can, this torque wrench doesn't click in the reverse mode, only in a tensioning mode or the right hand uh, mode there. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm putting it on one here that I haven't played with yet and we got it set at uh, 250 and we get the click. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and increase the increment here on up here. Uh, I'm just going to right to 300 the max on here and what I'm looking for is just a little bit of motion here before it clicks and I did get that so we're going to go ahead and break these loose and and we're going to be uh, torquing these down to 260 when we put it back together and that is uh, and we got to confirm that uh, measurement uh, because it's uh, these are dry and I believe that was a dry measurement there let's just take a look at here um grade eight ten um no actually three quarter of ten is supposed to be 380 dry and 280 oil and uh We'll pull one of these off of here, of course, and we'll see what uh, we actually have under the threaded areas here. But right now, we're going to go ahead and pull the, the two holding our plate there so we can get our match marks going. Okay, did you see that, Barry? Okay, I, uh, okay, it just slipped on, it just rotated, okay. That's the threads pop and not the wrench. Okay, now we can get on there with our impact. Okay, we're going to pull these 916s here and probably drop that plate right out of there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and match mark that just before we do that. Alright, we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark this the B side and the coupling or flange side uh, uh, the A side.
All right, and then while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and put a match mark at the split line. There may be several. We see a couple punches and stuff like that. This is number two, number two written there. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our own B here and B here. So we, uh, we know we have our own mark on it to how we tore, tore it apart. All right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put A in on this side here. Same thing down here on the side. Okay, we'll take these, we're going to put these in storage out in our shed there just for a little bit. <coughs> and they'll go, uh, <coughs> they'll go out there and uh, we'll, we'll get them sprayed down and wiped down and grease off uh, when it comes time for reassembling. And uh, so our two guards are off now. Alright, we're getting ready to take some dimensions right here. Now I'm going to show you uh, uh, this bearing here. This is a fixed bearing and the other one there is a free floating uh, set up. Both of them are the same bearing. One's missing a piece to lock it and the other one has it in there. So I'm going to show you the difference of those when we get them open. Alright, there's a little bit of pressure on this on the board here, but I can, that end is floating and I can actually just lightly put this in here and I can get this to move back and forth about probably no more than about fifty thousandths, okay? And, and this is a, a, a self-aligning to a certain point bearing here. So there's a little bit of free motion in, in there as well. But basically this is a fixed bearing. This is holding the thrust in and out on this shaft. Now on this end here, and actually I'm probably, I think I can pull this one better by hand here. So I come out and you can see that wear area right there. That's about 5 sixteenths of an inch that this, this bearing travels in and out. See? Okay, so this one floats, that one holds the thrust. Now with this one holding the thrust and that one floating there, any heat generated in your belts and your pulley and the action of, of uh, driving the system, a running system, there's a certain amount of heat that is generated in this V uh, pulley assembly. And this heat would grow in and out on the shaft. And that's why you would like to have one bearing floating. Um, it, so that as the shaft grows it has room to expand without affecting the thrust and the thrust is close to the coupling so that that distance does not have uh, much change between it and the coupling face of the drive of the motor alright so if you had the fixed over here this would expand and it would change your coupling in and out more radically on your engine than if you had the fixed bearing here and having a float and letting the shaft expand out in that direction all right, we went ahead and made a little map here, and what we're determining now is is uh, in in measurements so that we get everything all set. And first, what we're going to do is we know that this is seven sixteenths of an inch gap between these two pulleys right here, and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get an overall length. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this all the way in, and we're going to take a measurement. We're going to pull this one all the way out. We're going to take a measurement. All right, we went ahead and we took the leading edge of that bolt hole on that mount and we're at the same side of that and we took a measurement with it pushed all the way <clears throat> towards or together and then pulled all the way apart and we have those two dimensions written down so we have about 40 and 7 eighths to 40 and 15 sixteenths to pulling out at 41 and 3 sixteenths to 41 and a quarter uh, there's just a little bit of slop in place, so we just we added that in there, and we wrote down the multiple dimensions so that we have <clears throat> we have a good idea of where those two are located. All right, I'm going to set the weight down now, and we're going to go ahead and pull the top half of this bearing off of here. And start getting a look at the inside of this bearing. We're going to go ahead and finish popping this apart here.
Now these bolts go all the way through this whole ca casting. They can come out the bottom down there. All right, and there are two dowel holes right here, and then there are two different feet right here, and I'm going to get two pry bars and put underneath here simultaneously, and I'll be able to pull those uh, dowel pins right out of there. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this one under here, and this one over here. Just a, a little jiggle as you lift. Okay, it's it's free now. All right, let's see if we can grab it with our. It fell right back on the studs there. So, or I mean on the. Uh, you know what? You, you want to try to keep sharp objects out of the split line because you don't want to have any raised areas on there. So I'm going to grab a couple rags here. Actually, just my gloves here. Just so I can... There we go. Alright. I'm going to flip this over so you can see in there. And this, uh, the seals are what they call lamorant seals. They create a little pocket here for uh, the grease to channel through and, and give it a, a, a an area that it, it very hard to get back and track right back to it. I don't feel any grit or anything else into the bearings. We're going to be renewing all new bearings, so it's not a question. But I'm just kind of inspecting. Seeing if I can feel anything, I can't. It's just a whole bunch of grease has been flying around there. It does look kind of lumpy and kind of dried out. Probably hasn't seen grease often, but they uh, they also say that it shouldn't be greased that often. And I don't know. I don't know the total story on the bearings and the service that required um, I'm just going by uh, what was stated now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get another lift on this thing and we're gonna go ahead and lift this end out of the bearing block and we're gonna take the caps out of the way here um, and we're gonna be able to start working on getting this bearing off of this end of the shaft and then we're gonna then we'll work our way to the other end. Okay, a little tension on there. We'll give it light tap. Well, we don't. All we have to do is scare it. Scare it. That's all you have to do. water in there in the bottom of the bearing but that's from uh, that's from pressure washing and cleaning this thing which they did a very nice job uh, on that all right now we're gonna put the block under here move this bearing block we're gonna pull the studs out now we didn't get a chisel but we do have a punch here and all we gotta do is push that back out of the way there all right and it has a bend in it so we got to make sure that this part of it here is going to let that nut uh, swing around there all right so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to rotate it bring this next one up to the top here dead center here so this is the, this is the one that they were eyeballing as their prime lock all right and I don't feel yeah, next one too. Alright, but I think I can 
I'm going to get that one from here. Instead of rotating it again. Okay. Now we can rotate this off. Let me find my spanner wrench. All right. Uh, this is an S2, or at least that's what's stamped in here. Two to four and three quarter inch spanner wrench. And that's a, this is adjustable. This is a little bit small for this, but it still may do the job. All right. So I can get a hook on there. This hook right here, I've, I've, I've modified that in a little bit of a radius. And then I'm able to go ahead and pull it on around. And I take a little bit of a tapping. There we go. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and slide this lambert ring, or lantern ring depend on the, actually a, a Lambert ring a lantern ring actually has lightning holes this way and goes in between a space of a packing and it looks like a lantern a, a lantern and uh, excuse my English there alright now I'm not gonna bother cleaning this up uh, because we have new ones to put in here so I'm just gonna put it to the side everything that we got is gonna be replaced here so I'm just disassembling it and uh, the first thing we do is get this nut off of here. They did a real nice job on cleaning this thing up. There's no way that somebody can clean up an inside of a bearing for you and then deliver it and then have you take it apart. So, um, you know, I do, I'm not afraid of grease. And uh, you do have to get in there and play in it once in a while. But just for the most part, you know, if your thing needs a bath on the outside, Give it a bath before you bring it over here. This is a good sign here too that uh, things are big and if they're done right they can come apart just right. Alright, now that's a lock collar. That draws this sleeve in. Okay, and this is just a lock ring here, and this has a little keeper right there, and a little bit of dried, dried crud in in there. Almost looks like graphite, but it's just old, old dried, dried grease. Probably a little bit of powder and sand was, or not sand, but powder and dirt got in there and made it cake up. All right, now by pulling the bearing this way here. We're going to be breaking loose that that taper lock that's on the inside of the bearing. And I'm going to show you uh, what one of these look like here clean um, before I put the puller on here and get ready to pull this off. I had uh, forgot to show you why the bearing bottom or the cap was here. And uh, and you can see that that's your, your uh, self-aligning. That's, that's the motion the bearing gives you. Okay, but the in and out thrust on this, okay, this... This width right here is, eh, I'm just going to say somewhere around just under 2 and 3 quarters. Let's go at uh, 2 and 11 sixteenths, okay? Now let's go over and look at the housing. I said I'm down under the uh, big drill press here, but this distance that, that that bearing slides back and forth in is like 3 and a sixteenth or so. So that bearing is allowed to slip back and forth in the bore to grow uh, it, with heat on the shaft and everything else. So that's why this is a free um, free mount and the other one is a locked or fixed mount bearing. And when we pull the other cap off of there, we're probably going to see an extra ring in here that locates this side to side. Alright, we got our little puller on here and it does look like a little puller on here. And we have it tensioned up. Uh, we're stout, um, and we've got the nut off of the collar, and all we got to do is slightly break that loose, and it will come completely free because it's mounted on a taper sleeve. The taper sleeves that that bearing is mounted on looks just like that. Alright, now we've got the nut and this off of here, so all we basically have to do is break that off of there. Now I'm going to grab the torch and I'm going to warm around on this outside. And I'm going to see if I can't draw enough heat to finally get to the middle there 
and then in a race and then quickly maybe blow it and see if we can go ahead and get it to pop free without doing any major hammering or other kind of hazardous temptations to get through there. All right. Now this torch may be a little bit small. Maybe a little shock. All that heat, there's absolutely zero, zero to that center race there. Let's see if I can focus some to it. And uh, then we backed off our puller, we put the spanner nut on there and retensioned this up here. And uh, the heat's pretty well normalized now, I think it's pretty well uniform. But we're going to try a little punch, a little hammer, and just do a little shock and all right here. And see if this won't maybe jar. Yes, you might have to cut this bearing off of here. I'm not able. Really break that. Loose. <laughs> 